Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this episode we're going to start the build series of the Vickers Mark VI uh, which is in 135th scale released by Vulcan Models. I think this kit is a little bit out of production now but you can still see it around now and again and it is worth picking up because it's pretty much the only game in town for this particular vehicle and they did release uh, the free variants with the different armament. So just having a look at the parts here to start off with, we've got the, there's like three doors along the front that sort of open and fold back. And then we've got the upper deck going on. We, we get this whole tub um, that you can see there with, with a few spaces in the middle. And then we've got the back plate, the top plate, and then the front plates going on. So there's a number of uh, sort of large doors on the front of this, uh, th this tank. It's a little sort of tankette, but it, it did have a crew of three, so it's um, you know, it's surprising how they crammed them in there. And you can just see a lot of these pre-shaped parts just going on, just showing you how good the fit is. It all lines up just how you want it to. And then this is those three parts. I glued them together because these doors sort of fold back on themselves. And this was the easiest way to get it in. And there's just a little bit of... Uh, a bulge there at the front so I'm just trying to get it leveled up so we haven't got a, a gap there um, and it does go in as you can see there just as it pops out if you get the glue in it, it does go just how you want it there you are that, that gap sort of gone and with glue it goes away and it's a nice nice join there and then we've got another door as well that kind of just lifts up so this lifts up the, and then the the flat ones all fold back on themselves and that's how that crew per person gets out and then the chap next to him he's got a large door that lifts up and you'll you'll see that a bit later on that's just one piece it's all a little bit finicky these parts um it's it's well done i mean if you compare armor to aircraft this would be a short run um armor kit and i mean it's light years ahead of most short run aircraft kits uh, there isn't really any problems but if you're used to Tamiya and Meng and some of the newer um, manufacturers you would probably find this you know leaving a little bit to be desired in places uh, but overall it's, it's very well done it's a shame um, I do, I'm not sure Vulcan is still going I, I hope they are um, but I haven't seen any releases for some time you can see the large door there just on the left being put on now um, because this is a, a, a really quite nice kit and it's an unusual vehicle so you know you're not likely to get many people releasing these uh, now we're on to the uh, running gear here and um, the suspension is quite complex so I'm just taking a moment to show you here that there's a number of springs and they all look the same but they're not you've got to pay attention that one side they're using short shorter springs than the other side that is slightly longer and you can see m2 is short m1 is long and then that corresponds to the uh, springs as well so you get all of these metal parts and you get this photo etch as well and then it's just um take a deep breath and don't be too daunted by how this looks it actually goes together all right you've got you've got these sort of plastic pegs that go on the end of the metal bar so i've got one on and then you slide the metal bar through the first area where it needs to go and then you get the springs on and none of this is done under tension so there's there's not this massive worry of the springs bouncing off so much if you're having to do this under tension have it sprung that would be a problem so once you've got your two springs on you put this spacer on in the middle as well and then you put another set of two springs so you've got a small and then a large that goes over it And then we need to pull the rod back a little bit so it will go through the end of the plastic suspension unit like that. And then we can compress that a little bit, add a bit of super glue, and then we put that, um, I was calling it a spacer, but it's like an end cap. So there's an end cap on each side, which has a hole in it as well, which fits the uh, metal rod. And then once the unit's done, that's one side. And then you do that again on the other side. Now, obviously, um, it's a little bit complex, but it is such a great way of reproducing this. It looks exactly how it's meant to look. Uh, you wouldn't be able to do it in plastic. So, you know, daunting, but effective and worth the effort. And you'll see once we get the other side on, 
uh, and we get it mounted up, you can see how good that looks. Uh, now the fitment for the running gear, you can see there's a, uh, an awful lot of play and wobble there. So the best way to go about this, really, you've got four units that you need to line up. So I just used super glue. I just got them on there, super glued them on, leveled them up, and then plastered a bit of um, plastic glue in behind there as well, just to to get a good bond. So the super glue is holding it in position, and then the plastic glue is just helping um, increase that bond. And you can see there that it's they're all in line. And you need to look at it on a number of dimensions there, just to um, axes. Sorry, just to check how that they're in line from the top and from the side and as you look down and then level where they touch the ground as well but with a little bit of trial and error it's not not too difficult and then we've got the tracks going on as well so these are link and length uh but because the actual links on this vehicle are so small i think there's like 150 on one side we need to uh, the way they're done is almost like it is link and length but it's it's it, it allows you because they're thin it allows you to bend them around how you want them to go got the sprocket as well look as you see that it's it's not a good fixing point either lots of play so again really i just made sure that was lined up used a bit of super glue got it fixed then used plastic glue just to uh firm up that that join and you can see the different sections of track you've got here so this is two pieces that join over the return roller so you, I've just put that angle in and then you lock them on and um, they'll sit a little bit on the sprocket and a little bit on the last road wheel, which is also an idler. And then we've got the same along the bottom. So you've got one run and then it lifts up around the sprocket. And then I believe we've got a small run of uh, individual links as well. And they need to go around the sprocket. So I've just glued them up in a line, pushed them onto the sprocket and bent them around and then offered them up to this section here and uh, when they don't fall off they should meet the bottom run and the top run which they do so you can just lock them in again with glue glue them all on now these sort of tracks it's not really possible to leave them off the model the best way to go about this is get it all glued up and then paint it afterwards because there's plenty of space there to get in so as you can see you've done the front run around the sprocket top run around the sprocket bottom run around the sprocket and now we've just got uh, again another load of individual links to go around the rear idler and for that it's super glue pull them together use a bit of accelerator and it sets and there you are locked in so this is it's a way i do my modeling is, is just to use super glue in strategic places for holding and then use plastic glue to to really get that that bond for longer term set but if you're gluing stuff under tension a little dab of super glue is always the best way to go i think but i, I wouldn't rely just on the super glue because it can be a bit brittle you see i just putting a little bit of sag in just by bending those tracks it's kind of the only way to do it you could run a bit of uh glue along there as well tam your extra thin and then that would soften them up and then you'd be able to just let that sag kind of mold into it And getting the front fender on around there it's just making sure that the front mud guard is lined up where we need it to be it's just a little bit of a space for it and once that's in line we go back along the rest of the uh the side fender there and it glues up quite nicely now these have these side fenders have photo etch mounting points which also need bolts putting on and those bolts the well the bolt heads uh, photo etch and I couldn't get on with them at all so I went a different way which we'll see in a minute and I actually used um, uh, a bit of plastic rod cut up but you can see how effective that is this photo etch all comes in the kit everything you need and I've got a small bit of metal rod there as well just showing you how that's um, securing that a uh, little clip there that holds in the uh, the spade, a few other things. You can see the 
white plastic there now on which are the bolt heads and so we've got to do the other side um, down the, the run of the fender and again gluing all of the um, uh, tools on is kind of the best way to go so I've put only put one of these sections on these supports and for that you can see the holes that are in there so this is how I made the bolts and those bolt heads just lie on the top so you get, just get a bit of a 0 0.5 well half mil um, plastic rod and then just cut the intersections how you want it to be then you get these little sort of bolt heads and then you can just apply them on very awkward I've already got it placed on there dab of extra thin because that's just enough to melt the plastic and hold it onto the metal if you use super glue you get into a right mess because it, it you you see the super glue whereas the extra fin just sort of um goes away it evaporates now you can see the bolt and we just need to do two on there two on the bottom now on this side we haven't got as many um supports because we've got this rather large exhaust unit section that goes on but there is this row of rivets that are molded in which just don't let it um sit where we want it to go so the best way to about that is just to cut those off so we can glue it on flush to the side of the hole simple stuff but i mean you know you you can get into a bit of a a problem if you if you don't highlight where these problems are so that's just what i'm doing here and then we've got an exhaust that goes in the back of there as well mounts there on that plate it's all good stuff you know it's nice kit it's nice and challenging as well uh, so we've got some uh, smoke launchers I think they are on the side of the turret and um, th the right one I've drilled out and it just gives such a better uh, look to it so that's again just going on with a number of drill bits just to start the hole it's like a pilot hole and then get bigger and bigger and bigger until you open up the hole to how you want it to be to the right size so that's starting it and then as we go on a bit we get a bigger drill bit and then you actually need, need a, a, a drill because it gets a bit more than what the you can do with your fingers and now we're getting the turret finished off so again that was one piece and then you just glue sections on uh, I don't know what this part is, but this is a a part that just sort of glues on to the outside. Nice um, flush join there. And you see the cupola on the top. So we've got one side uh, open because I'm going to add some figures and then we've got another side that's uh, shut down. There's a few more bits and bobs that just get glued onto this. That aerial was one piece as well, which is nice. Usually don't have those sort of things included in kits at the moment. So it's nice to have it moulded. And then we've got... Um, there's the holders sticking out the side there, which take the smoke launchers. And then we've got a... This here is the uh, the mantlet, which is where the the cannon goes. So this is a cannon and a machine gun, I believe. No, it's two auto cannons. Sorry, um, of different calibers. So you just get these kind of troughs, I guess, for want of a better word, and then the um, the barrel slot in, and then fix into the back of it. I did drill the holes out a little bit because they're a bit shallow, just to take these. It's quite effective once you've got them both on. Looks like quite a uh, impressive armament. Not sure it would do much against tanks, but I'm not sure again that that really was the idea. And there you go, just leaving that. That's all sort of loose, as many parts loose as we can leave, I, I do. And that shows you the finished build. So it's an impressive little kit. Um, so stay tuned to this one because uh, next week we'll be getting this finished off with the painting and um, starting on some weathering. 
So as always, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel. Stay tuned as we've got many builds coming down uh, the line. If you uh, want to support the channel, there's a couple of ways you can do that in the description box below. As always, thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.